So hi, Morden. It's great to be here to talk with you today about inclusive leadership. But before we begin, it would be great for you to give us an introduction to yourself. Thank you very much for inviting me, Sam. It's, uh, it's great to be here. So my name is Morten Christensen, and I hit the newly established energy transition team. And um, I've been around the company for almost 12 years now, so in, in, I'm almost a veteran by now. <laughs> yes. And I think as most people who have been here in, in many different roles, but super excited about the one I have now. Great. Now, of course, we will touch upon uh, that team and all the great work uh, that you're doing. But let's uh, take it back a little bit. So let's hear a little bit about your upbringing, your education, and of course, um, your dreams when it came to your future career. So I actually had a very privileged upbringing. I, I grew up in, in this country, in Denmark. Uh, small provincial town, some 80 kilometers west of Copenhagen, so I'm almost a local. Yeah, so in school, uh, my big passion was always math, and that was always sort of what lit my fire in school. And um, I ended up doing engineering instead of math, because back then I could only imagine that I could become a, a teacher, and that was not uh, my ambition. So I ended up with engineering, but certainly haven't, uh, haven't regretted that. And, um, and yeah, today I, I've, been in, I've been in strategy roles here in math. Now I, I lead the energy transition team, so you can say that uh, many roads can lead to Rome. Absolutely. <laughs> and they certainly do. So but, when it comes to the structural engineering part, can you then tell us a little bit how your career then took off and some of your career highlights that brought you yeah. here to Maersk? Yeah, so I actually kind of really enjoyed the engineering work. I, I, I like to solve problems. But, you know, I, I kind of felt that my learning curve was kind of maybe flattening out a bit after five years. And actually, I experienced that at one sort of recruitment fair, I was actually leading the team for the engineering company. And I saw this slogan from a, a, a consulting company called uh, Boston Consulting Group that said, once you're good at something, it's time to learn something new. Ah, okay. And I thought, hmm, that makes sense. Yeah. So, so I, I decided, well, it's time to try something new. And I, I sent an application to this uh, consulting firm. Had I had no idea what I signed up for. <laughs> But uh, eight uh, interviews later, uh, they eight. offered me a contract and uh, I stayed there for uh, five, six years. And I had a great time. I learned a lot, but uh, I needed this sort of a uh, place to belong. And uh, that's how I ended up here at, at Mask. So you found a home here. Yeah. And, and to be honest with you, one of the things that I really now we talk about sort of um, diversity and inclusion, I think one of the, the first time I really had this aha moment of, of diversity of thought was actually once we did a project at BCG. And one of the team members was a Swiss woman who was a theologist, so basically a priest. And this was pretty early in my life. I was like, what? I mean, can she even do an Excel sheet, right? I mean, a priest. But I was really impressed by the insights and what her kind of thinking brought to the table, right? Because I came at it from my analytical yes. engineering type mindset. And all of a sudden, there was someone who studied theology. And she had so different perspectives on things. And that was, I think that was the first real aha moment that I had. And, and I think one of the good things about working in consulting is that you actually do bring people in from very different, at least the um, diversity of thinking yes. is, is quite good. Um, other aspects of diversity, perhaps less so, but the diversity of thinking was actually quite great. And I really realized that, wow, that's extremely inspiring environment to be in. So in, in actually deciding to join Mask, that was actually a big, a big part of it because I always think it was a, in, in many aspects, at least, not at all. We still have a lot of work to do, but I think in many aspects, actually, a quite diverse work environment to be in. Well, it's so, a global company yeah, absolutely, with a big right? reach. So yeah. that was really a, my checklist of places I wanted to work. I, I think it just came out on top very easily. So the challenge doesn't get any greater than our planet and decarbonization. So you are working in a very high stakes team with real world <laughs> impacts. So can you tell us why it's so important to have those diversity of thought and how you nurture and promote your team to sort of think outside the box to solve these very complex challenges. Yeah, speaking of a complex challenge, <laughs> I think when I, when I reflect on actually the, you know, the responsibility given to the energy transition team, it's really, you know, you can almost say it's like exercising constant care in how we actually feed this company with energy, right? Mask is actually one of the largest energy consumers on the planet. And we need to make sure, of course, that we, we take care of today by getting the sharpest costs all in time and also in a responsible manner. While at the same time, we need to transition an energy system, which is completely on fossil fuel to one based on renewable energy. And we have 17 years to do it, right? I mean, talk about a, a, a complex challenge. And it's, it's both about now and, and sort of running a big operation as we do in mass oil trading. It's also about looking to the future and transitioning the whole thing and actually building that new infrastructure. So it's really about being, you know, you can call it almost ambidextrous. So riding with both your right and your left, but also your feet and your head at the same time. So, you know, in order to solve that, I think we need to build on a lot of the strong capabilities that we have today, but also build new ones and also build on the ones we have to create new ones. And I think that's what the energy transition team is, is all about. 
And thank God we have a lot of the capabilities already in the team, but we have also been building and still need to build a, a new capability. So people who understand about fuels and carbon economy and many different things that if you go back three, five years ago, honestly, it was not something that was that relevant for us, to be honest. So we've been trying to build that up. And, uh, and I, I certainly think that in, in terms of a team like that, solving such a complex global challenge, I think just having a, a diverse team in every aspect of, of the world is, is absolutely critical. And I do actually think when I look at the team, I'm actually quite proud of what we have managed to build up. I think both in terms of, of certainly professional backgrounds, we have a lot of new capabilities into the team, um, but, uh, but also cultural backgrounds with many, many different nationalities. I'm very proud of that. And it's just absolutely critical for us to solve this um, can I touch a little bit upon some of the traits that you are sort yes. of nurturing or looking for when it comes to the diversity of thought? And what are some of the traits that you see within your team members and leaders in this area? At least for me, I think the role of the leader is really to, first of all, just build the team that can get the job done and then inspire that team to actually do the job. And then, of course, help in getting the job done, right? But when I look at my team, I mean, there are so many diverse capabilities that I, I mean, all my direct reports are much better at what they do than I would be, right? They all do a better job in what they do than I ever would. So it's just a very different role from what you uh, grew up with. So I really do think that it, it, it's all about that. And, and what are then the traits of that? Yeah, well, I think, of course, you need, um, you need some curiosity to actually care for what's going on, and both in the external world and the internal world. And I guess you also need some imagination so that you can actually yes. sort of, you know, actually try to paint some, some vision or some place where we want to go. And then I think one of the most important uh, traits is actually empathy, um, because uh, you need empathy both to understand your own team and understand how you can help, but also understanding our customers, what they actually need, understanding what the societies around us need. So I think that that element of empathy and, and also, you know, actually as, as one of our core values, humbleness, right, that you, you, you listen, you learn and, and you just recognize that there's so much you don't know and you need actually to work with others to solve these problems. So I would say, Again, there are many, many traits needed, but, but um, I think also a collaborative mindset, right? That you don't uh, care so much about if you get the credit or yeah. the other person or whatever, but, but that you, because these things are so complex. So nobody, nobody can, does have any chance of solving these things uh, by themselves. So it's a lot of different traits that you have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I doubt that uh, there is any one sort of perfect uh, leader out there, but I, I think if we all have these sort of guiding lines, I think we can all try to be a little bit better every day. Yeah, and that's that combination that you've described, because of course, we have to find these fuels, we need to scale them up, it's not been done before. That's so nice. you need this wealth of knowledge and diverse teams uh, to do that, which is great to hear that you are promoting and nurturing uh, that team to do so. Absolutely. So there's a lot of data out there, of course, that talks about the commercial benefits of having a diverse team on numerous uh, levels. But could you give us some examples of the benefits that you have seen in terms of the diverse teams that you've been in, managed or around mm. you from different experiences? I think we've touched upon it already, actually, because as we discussed, right, we are solving some very complex problems in a very complex world. And you basically need a lot of different angles to solve those problems. So I think that's one aspect of it. But I think also, I mean, we are a global company. We serve 100,000 customers. Um, we have a, I think also we actually, we have 100,000 suppliers, something like that. So we, we, we just need to reflect the world that we live in, right? So if you only represent one subset of the world that you're in, I mean, how can you, and you will be blindfolded, right? So so I, I think, and, and, and again, as we also touched upon some of the biggest failures that we have seen is basically group thing, right? That you, you turn inwards when the going gets tough and you look for people who think just like you, because then you can confirm that, oh yeah, it's just, the world is just unfair. And you know, I think that's just the recipe for disaster. And I think with the rate of change going up and all the challenges that we are faced with, I think it's just becoming increasingly important. And then I think finally, sort of on the personal note, I mean, what gets you up in the morning? What gets you to work, right? I think it's super inspiring to actually meet and get perspectives from people from all parts of the world and all kinds of backgrounds and religions and ways of thinking, right? So I think also on the personal note, it just, yeah. I think it's just my engagement, certainly. Then. And then um, a little birdie told me that you actually are quite active when it comes to connecting with the front line. Hmm. Can you tell me why this is important to you and what ways do you do this? Yeah, so I, I think, uh, so I, I work in the headquarter here. And so when, whenever I, 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 I travel, I, I always try, if, if possible, to get the opportunity to actually go out and, and, and see the sharp end or the, yes. you know, the, the front line where we actually do our business. And I always go home so inspired. I mean, I'm super impressed with the, the quality of the people we have wherever you go by the dedication they have to the company 
and sort of, uh, you know, you feel this burning desire to be here and, and, and serve our customers and, and do what we do, right? Living our purpose, really. So I always try whenever I can, uh, whether it's a, it's a terminal or a warehouse or one of our offices, it, it's always amazing to do a game pair or to see how we really do our business. Well, that's a great note to end on. It's been great sort of diving into your world. And of course, uh, we wish you all success when it comes to, of course, when it comes to the energy transition. And it was great to end on the note of our front line because, of course, we are a very global uh, company uh, that has real world impact. So thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks. Thank you.